So we're asked to find the length and width of a rectangle with maximum area that has a perimeter of 9p units. Uh, so solution. So whenever you're given a geometric shape, um, draw a picture. So here we have a rectangle, so let's draw a picture of a rectangle. So there is our rectangle. And we need to find the length and width of this rectangle that makes the area as big as possible. So let's call this x. Let's call it y. Okay. And we're told something about the perimeter. We're told it's equal to 9p units. So if this is x, then this is also x. And if this side is y, then this side is also y, because it's a rectangle. So if we add up the sides, the lengths of the sides, we should get the perimeter, right? That's what the perimeter is. It's the sum of the lengths of the sides. So we end up with 2x plus 2y equals 9p. So we've now used this information. We've used the fact that the perimeter has 9p units, and we've come up with an equation. All right, now we need to find the maximum area. So the area of a rectangle is just length times width, so x times y. So let's call this f of x. And the question is to make this as big as possible. We want the maximum area, so we want to maximize this. That's the goal. We want to maximize this. The problem with maximizing this is that we have a function of two variables. Uh, we want a function of one variable. So what we'll do is solve this equation for y. So let's do that. To solve this for y, we'll subtract 2x from both sides. So we get 2y equals 9p minus 2x. Divide everything by 2. And so we end up with y equals 9p minus 2x all over 2. Now we'll take the y and just plug it back in here. So f of x is equal to x times y, but y this time is 9p minus 2x over 2. Right? All we did was replace y with y. Now we'll distribute. So f of x is equal to, uh, let's see, let's do it in two steps. This is x, parentheses, 9p over 2 minus, right, you take 9p over 2, and then minus 2x over 2. So 2x over 2 is just x. So continuing to simplify, we get 9p over 2 times x minus x squared. And again, the goal is to maximize this, right? We want to make this as big as possible. So to do that, we'll use the second derivative test. So let's use the second derivative test. Use second derivative test. So the second derivative test basically says if you plug in a critical number into your second derivative and it's positive, you have a minimum. And if it's negative, you have a maximum. So the first step when using the second derivative test is to find the critical numbers. So you take the derivative and you just set it equal to zero. So the derivative of this piece will just be 9p over 2. Why? Um, well, what's the derivative of 2x? That's just 2, right? So here the derivative of 9p over 2 times x is just 9p over 2, right? 9p over 2 is a number just like 2. Um, so when you take the derivative, uh, you just get 9p over 2, right? When you take the derivative of this, you get this, minus 2x. That's the derivative of x squared. And we set this equal to 0. To solve this for x, maybe add the 2x to both sides. So plus 2x plus 2x. So we get 9p over 2 equals 2x. And the x is being multiplied by 2, so to get rid of it, divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half. So 1 half, 1 half. These cancel, and you get x equals 9p over 4. All right, this is our critical number. So Remember, what are we doing? We're using the second derivative test to try to find the maximum of our function here. Right? So the first step in using the second derivative test is to find the critical numbers. So that part is done. The second step is to take the second derivative. Well, the derivative of 9p over 2, it's a constant. So the derivative is 0. We don't have to write it. And the derivative of negative 2x is just negative 2. Okay. So we found the critical number, we took the second derivative, 
Now what we do is we plug in the critical number, or evaluate, rather, the second derivative at the critical number. So f double prime of 9p over 4, well, you just get negative 2. That's less than 0, so we have a max at x equals 9p over 4, right? That's what the second derivative test says, right? If the second derivative is less than 0 at a critical number, you have a max. If the second derivative is greater than 0 at a critical number, you have a min, right? So um, let's finish. So we have a max at this number. We know that y is equal to 9p minus 2x over 2. So we have x, right? That's one of the answers. Now we just need to find y. So just take the x and put it here. You might say, well, we had x up here. Yeah, we did, but um, what if we had gotten two critical numbers? Then we really should have checked. It's better to always check to justify all your work. So uh, always use the second derivative test in these optimization problems. That's usually the way to go. Uh, so this is 9p minus 2, and then x, it's right here, is 9p over 4. And this is all being divided by 2. So we get 9p minus, and then the 2's cancel. 2 cancels with the 4, so you get minus 9p over 2, over 2. So there's really a 1 here. So you have 1 9p, and you're subtracting half of 9p, so you have half of 9p left. That's a little tricky, right? Um, think of it this way. We have 1 times 9p minus 1 half times 9p. So 1 minus 1 half is 1 half 9p. Kind of a cool way to do it. And we're dividing this by 2. When you divide by 2, you really multiply by the reciprocal. So y is equal to 1 half 9p times uh, 1 half. And so that's 9p over 4, right? 1 half is the reciprocal of 2. So it looks like we end up with the same answer for both x and y. So the final answer is x equals 9p over 4 and y equals 9p over 4. And I guess this was our length and this was our width. Okay, and that's it. And I guess the moral of this problem is that whenever you have a rectangle, whenever you have, um, say, you had some, say you had some fence, and you wanted to build a, a backyard, and you only had 100 feet of fence, 100 feet of fence, and you wanted to make the backyard as big as you possibly can, well, the biggest backyard you can make would be a square, right? Uh, where all the sides are the same length. So I hope this helps.